Hello. And welcome to the PC Gaming Week Spot, your recap of the last seven days in PC video gaming. My name is Colin Mahern, and joining me this week. Uh, let me just reach over, reach over here. Oh, gotcha hat. It's Mr. Matthew <laughs> Castle. Hello. I have a hat as well. Oh, hang on. I th I thought I... We, we, we've two hats. What you, where did you All get right. a spare hat, Matthew? For, we'll get on to the hat business later. But do you, do you know what I am referencing? Uh, well, well, I assume you're referencing our Resident Evil thing, but maybe not. No, this is a, a different oh, hat. Oh, is, is it a wrestler? No, but you're quite... It sounds like something a wrestler might do. Because like, I know that some wrestlers wear baseball caps. Uh, and that someone's move could be that they get their hat and say, got your hat. It sounds like the kind of shenanigans one might expect from WWE. I mean, I mean, it's WWE-esque shenanigans, but this is actually in reference to, are you familiar with the Paul brothers? Um, one Jake Paul was, oh. th was there with his brother awful, Logan Paul, who was... Boy. Who was, yes, uh, they were promoting. So Logan Paul, I, do you know that Logan Paul... Oh, he's going to, he's going to get, get uh, basically his head caved in by a professional boxer. Floyd Mayweather, yes. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so they had a press conference and uh, Jake Paul, who isn't involved in the fight, uh, but he started squaring up to Floyd, Floyd Mayweather and like just stole his hat off him. And there was proper, it actually got, it kind of, it, from the viewer's perspective, it went from like jovial ban fight banter to like, oh Jesus Christ, Floyd Mayweather is actually going to kill him. Uh, and then Jake Paul went and got, he like tattooed, got your hat on him. He mm. is selling now baseball caps, which of, of if you're watching the week spot regularly, you know that that is, you know, our top tip for the summer baseball caps. But yeah, he's selling baseball caps with like got your hat on him. Right. But yeah, before I dream that up, I, I, I forgot about our hat discussion, but mm. we can talk about that not, later, not, Matthew. Not not quite as well known online <laughs> as that. I no. mean, if you were to say like, um, well, I don't know. If you were to say to me like something interesting about hats, I'd obviously reach for our Resident Evil bet. Of course. Um, but if you asked the average teenager, I imagine they'd come up with the the Jake Paul thing before Probably. they said Weak Spot has a hat based bet on the go. But that would be second. After it the pause. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a more famous hat meme currently doing the rounds. <laughs> I mean, it's quite a golf. It's a throp. You mm. go like Jake Paul, and then it's like, all the way down to yeah. weak spot. Resident but Evil hat. <laughs> yes. I'd like to think that people who watched weak spot are more invested in our hat shenanigans mm. than the Paul brothers. Agreed. Yeah, that would be. I, I think we have a have a you know a, a very intelligent and invested listener and viewer base. So mm. I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> um, but Sounds yeah, right. we'll get on to all that, Matthew. Uh, you know, norm. Th there are weeks here on the week spot where, especially in the last couple of months, you know, like the game releases have been. A big game releases, I suppose you should say, have been maybe few and far between some weeks. Mm. And then other weeks, they'll be like, what news? What's happening? Nothing. This week, Matthew, it has been, uh, it's just been mad. It's been absolutely mad. So do you know what? Just grab your news crank and open that news gob of yours because I have some information snacks for you. So just eat them up, boy. Nom, 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 Info nom, nom, snacks nom, nom, for his gob. <sighs> so yeah, there's just, a, there's a lot going on, Matthew. There's a lot going on. And our first little story here is that after initially saying that the, they were going for a hybrid slash in-person thing, Gamescom organizers have now confirmed that this year's event will be online only from the 25th of August to the 27th. I think it was initially the 25th to the 29th or something. It was a, mm -hmm. a little bit longer. Uh, so, you know, makes sense. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet. That place is hell on earth when there's loads of people in it so 
fifty thousand or something. It's, it's huge. Like it makes massive. it makes E three look barren. Well, in E three news, Ooh, Konami speaking tweeted of the barren E three. Konami tweeted last week that they are quote not ready to present at E three, and they added that they are quote in deep development on a number of key projects. So please stay tuned for some updates in the coming months. Oh, I'm so excited for the Konami comeback. Uh, Pro Evolution Soccer 2022 Everything I think that you come back Hit you with Silent Hill Bit of Metal Gear The football Sure Throw the football in For the football guys um, I thought that's the only thing They had been making These last few years Pez yeah Yeah so like it, But uh, So this to me Like key projects Surely yeah We are going to be looking at this, whether there is one or two Silent Hills, who knows? Uh, and maybe they give out and they're like five Silent Hill games on and the same zero day. Metal Gears. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Wow, you're really going big on Silent Hill." That's weird. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. We'll 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 see. Yeah, hopefully, I would like a Konami comeback. That oh, would be that would be nice. Um, something which isn't coming back because it's just ever present over the last couple of years. Tom Clancy's The Division. Is uh, we're getting a little spin off called Ooh. Heartland, which was announced Whoa. last week. It is a standalone free to play game and it's due to come out, according to Ubisoft, e- in either 2021 or 2022. So, I don't know. It's, they're giving themselves a large window and, you know, if, they, if, if it needs be. But there's, there's no word on what it actually is. But I think the, the safe bet would be a battle royale of some kind, maybe. Yeah. I mean, divisions, yeah. Division's big, but that team, they're working on the Star Wars game, aren't they? Yes. Uh, Ubisoft Massive, yeah. so I'm guessing this instead of Division 3. Uh, that's a good shout, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do, do you think that maybe this is just the Division, but smaller? Or Maybe, I don't yeah. Heartland. That makes me think of, like, rural... Middle America. Yeah. So maybe like it would be less intensive because it's not like a big complicated city, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just a load of maniacs running around a farm with machine guns. <laughs> Sounds and like that a good is time. Division three. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Yeah. Uh, Activision has confirmed that Sledgehammer are making the next Call of Duty, the the one that's coming out this year. Their last one was World War Two, which had a character called Paul Daniels in it, and for that <laughs> I am. I am forever grateful. Uh, so yeah, and it's it, it, this one is meant to be out this autumn. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know. Like, I don't really know where we're at with Call of Duty because Warzone's so massive and mm. is like the main event. Do these other games matter? I mean, like, isn't like the basic deal? Wasn't the basic deal with the last one? You basically bought it and you got some like, you know, had a campaign and everything, but it also got you some stuff in in Warzone. In Warzone. Uh, I think, I think, well, Warzone, um, I don't know, but I, I, I yeah. This is no, the level but, of expertise people yeah, choose. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's leave for. it off. It's yeah, one yeah. of the biggest games on the planet and we're like, I think it involves guns? You're, you're not going to get much Call of Duty insight here, so uh, <laughs> let's move on uh, to relaxing early access game where you break down mm. spaceships with loads of different tools, Hard Space Shipbreaker. Uh, that came out last year in early access. It's still in early access, mm-hmm. but it is going to be getting a fully voiced campaign and an update coming on the 6th of May. I really enjoyed that game. I didn't play loads of it when it came out, but I played a decent chunk of it and t- totally unlike the games I would normally play. But yeah, I found it very, I've, very calming, very nice. I've sort of banked it away as a play this, you know, when, when, it's, done. The, when, when it's done kind of thing. Mm. So I, I'm very intrigued by a, a fully voiced campaign. So yeah, we'll see. Nice. We'll see. Nice. Uh, and uh, Ryu Gagatoko. I always stumble on that one, but you just got to just... <laughs> Very you know, brave. I just call it the accuser it. team. Fly through it and just <laughs> hope that nobody notices. Um, but yeah, they've confirmed that all future Yakuza games will be turn-based, a la Like a Dragon, and Judgment is going to be their brawler action series, essentially. They announced this last week alongside a Judgment sequel called Lost Judgment, but they've said they don't have any plans to bring that to PC, which is a shame. That's uh, odd. But, um, yes, it is. Seeing as they have been so 
you know, let's bring everything to, yeah. or let's bring all the Yakuza's to PC for them to be like, no, we're not touching Judgment. I don't know. But I thought, I thought yeah. Judgment was good, not great. I'm really looking forward to the sequel, see if they improve it. I thought, I thought it was a little bit, I uh, thought the main guy was very boring. And uh, I didn't think it quite delivered on the, like, this is Yakuza from a whole different perspective. You know, you were so, a detective who was still very much, like, you basically to, everything you did was what a gangster would do. <laughs> like you yeah, so I, I, I did really like Judgment, and I liked, I liked the story. Like, the story is what, like, how many video games tackle alzheimer's i mean i don't yeah, know it's, it, it, it's, it's, it, it, but boss but to your point like when they were building up to the the announcement of judgment they were talking it up like this completely different thing you know totally um separate from yakuza and this was before like a dragon so we were going from i think yakuza 6 to judgment and it was like this is a another brawler is set in mm. Camarocho. And like, uh, yes, I like, I like how those games play, but I was, I don't know, I was expecting something a little bit different. And the, de- thought- the detective stuff was, ah, uh, they just led you by the nose, I found. They didn't allow you to be that's a detective it. That's, that's the problem. I thought, I thought it was going to be a little bit like Yakuza meets Ace Attorney, which would be the best game ever made. Um, but it was, it was pretty much just Yakuza. If anything, I thought Like a Dragon was sort of tonally more different in that, yeah. Everyone in it was ancient, you know, because you were basically playing as like a load of, you know, geriatrics, late forty-year-old late men. It's great, mm. um, but hey, doesn't matter. It's not coming to PC. What? Yep, <laughs> I've just shared a completely redundant opinion with you. Uh, well, do you have any opinions, redundant or otherwise, on IO Interactive's next game, which is supposedly? All rumour at this point, but it is a, an Xbox exclusive, which you'd imagine also means PC. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, came out that there was rumblings of that last week and Windows Central Gaming were reporting that it is a, quote, dragon themed IP. Because mm-hmm. that worked so well for Platinum and Xbox. Oh, Scalebound. Scalebound. Dragons, I think, are... Like loads of people are like in their head have an idea for an amazing dragon game, but I think they're quite hard to make great dragon games because there was that terrible PlayStation one all those years ago on PlayStation Three. Lair, Lair, Lair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the terrible movie tie-in for Reign of Fire <laughs> years before that. Um, I don't know. I think dragons are a bit of a. I guess they're in Skyrim. People like them. Uh, I don't know. But would would. I, I suppose kind of like what we were talking about when it comes to the Yakuza studio. Um, <laughs> like, you know, and then I say, you know, give us something different or whatever. Like the fact that IO Interactive are here. To, well, they're not talking about it, but like there's rumors of them making this fantasy game. Maybe, you know, your mind could run wild. Is it like going to be like a Dragon Age or a, mm. I don't know, a divinity or or... or something different like them making a dragon themed was it a dragon themed ip was their thing uh mm. yeah like i don't know I, that, that seems cool Cause like because james bond whilst i would trust them with the, them to be the studio that would like get me interested in james bond uh, like i have a feeling james bond would also be similar to hitman yeah it better be so so like them potentially making something quite different i'm like yeah yeah no huh? sign me up sign he's me basically up. going around all the hitman locations as a dragon eating everyone eating the rich of paris shit that sounds excellent <laughs> yeah I, you're I, for that. I like that i like that <laughs> uh so those are your information snacks for this week so now let's get on to the big stories the one big story oh. with loads of little ones scattered about hey, it's time for headlines and hot takes hello i'm hugh edwards working in news is exciting yes headlines and hot takes is the part of the pc gaming week spot where we take you through the bigger news stories of the past week and yeah, things have been trickling out over the last seven days as Epic versus Apple 
has been taking place in the courts. So, uh, some very interesting little tidbits, some not so much. Uh, but yeah, quite a lot. So, look, I suppose a little reminder first. Apple took Fortnite off of the App Store after Epic uh, started to cut Apple out of in-app purchases made in Fortnite. And then that led to Epic suing Apple in August of last year. And then Apple filed a countersuit against Epic for breaching their terms of contract. And we're here now. We're in a trial, uh, which started last Monday, the 3rd. And by the time you're listening or watching this, I'm sure more, t- Tim Sweeney will have said more things. Um, but I don't know, Like I, up to the recording of this, here's what's happened. Yeah. Some stuff, like we'll rattle through some of the more interesting stuff that's slightly related to PC, but some maybe not so much. Uh, and then we'll kind of get on to all the Epic Game Store stuff. But firstly, apparently, this is just, I find quite interesting, is that iOS devices account for 7% of Fortnite revenue, or accounted for 7% of Fortnite revenue between March of 2018 and July of 2020, with um, PlayStation being the, the top money spinner, Xbox second, Switch third, PC fourth, and then iOS fifth. Mm-hmm. Uh, Android makes them absolutely fuck all. Uh, which I was like, I don't know. I just, I, I would have thought that I also would have been made them more, but I get, you know. I don't know. It's kids, isn't it? Do, do lots of kids have an iPhone or I, I don't know. Fair, yeah, fair point, fair point. Uh, another little thing. Um, this is from senior editor at The Verge, Tom Warren, who is covering the trial. He tweeted, Epic CEO Tim Sweeney just informed, confirmed that Sony is the only platform holder that requires Epic to pay compensation for crossplay. Epic had to agree to pay these additional fees to enable crossplay in Fortnite. And in the trial, later on, some emails between Tim Sweeney and PlayStation executive Phil Rosenberg came up. Um, these were before crossplay came to effect. And in these emails, Sweeney said that he doesn't think Sony's crossplay stance is legal. And he even says, uh, <laughs> some of this is a reminder to be careful what you kind of email in company accounts and like Slack in company mm. things, whatever else. But Sweeney said, Epic much prefers, and we assume Sony also prefers, to have the frankest possible policy discussion in private now than to have any sort of public conflict later. You'll sleep with the fishes. Um, and a little kind of extra thing is that in some email exchanges between Sweeney and Xbox's Phil Spencer, it do- it's not totally clear, but it doesn't seem like there's much hassle from that. It seems like PlayStation, and it, I suppose we don't know if that's the case for mm. other developers and whatever else, but that PlayStation was the one charging Epic for crossplay, whereas like Nintendo or Xbox or anything else, it was like, no, crack on, it's fine. Mm. And one other thing, again, small little thing, is that uh, Xbox's Laurie Rice took the stand on the 5th of May and said something that we probably already knew, but, you know, we have confirmation of. And again, this is from senior editor at The Verge, Tom Warren. He said, or this is a quote to her. Does Microsoft ever earn a profit on the sale of an Xbox console? No, says Wright. If Microsoft sells consoles at a loss, why does it keep selling consoles? Wright responds that the biz model is for a consumer end-to-end experience and hardware is critical for that. So they're making nothing, nothing off of the sales of Xboxes. There you go. Practically giving them away the saints. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, I, I mean, the, the PlayStation 1 does ring true to, if you remember, uh, kind of back then, there was a lot... Uh, PlayStation were getting... Some hassle from people for the fact that like it it seemed like the 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 last holdout, and I think there were other games as well. So yeah, I I don't fully know if this is if it's just Epic they're charging or if it's. A I few mean, others. it's always the, the people who are in the lead who can be more bullish with what they're doing, right? It's 100%. very easy when you're the underdog to be like, you know, Xbox has been very good at this sort of stating that they're the good guys in all of this, and yeah. They'll always, they'll always pursue the good policy, but that's because they're trying to win you over. They used to say if they were number one that they wouldn't be dicking you over. Well, let's, you know, go back a generation to the 360 where they were in the lead and 
the, the roles were shifted. PlayStation was the underdog, the, the people's champion when it came to consoles. <laughs> was it the people's champion? Well, yeah, like because they, because they just X- play Lair. <laughs> Lair. Well, well, I suppose the the under all right the underdog then maybe not so much the people's champion deservedly so. But uh, yeah, no, some more PC related things. Come on, give, hit me, hit me with this PC, Gus. Well, I mean, are you familiar with a Wall Mart? Is that oh, a very aware. So yeah, big American supermarket chain. Uh, they were scheduled to launch a beta for a cloud gaming service codenamed Project Storm. Cool Ooh. code name, probably made up by an eleven-year-old. I hope, but yeah, they were going to be launching that in July 2019, apparently, and they were going to be running the service through Windows uh, via game launchers like the Epic Game Store and other things were mentioned: Steam, Battle.net, UPlay, and Origin. But that was apparently put on hold when COVID hit. Uh, Matthew, why? Why are people, I don't know, may, well, I suppose this was before Stadia kind of, you know, came and went, but. I don't know. I guess that they thought, like, when you're buying your peas or whatever from Walmart, that uh, I assume they sell food. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I see that. <laughs> but they uh, Are they like a Tesco? Is you know, a- that you can have lots of, like, point of sales stuff for your, I mean, it's odd. You'd think, like, if Google can't make a go of it, being like most people's, yeah, you know, the, the kind of lens through which they view the internet. If they can't get people to do this thing, the idea that someone can be like, hey, while you buy these sausages, why don't you also do cloud gaming? <laughs> like it's, Let me explain it's, cloud <laughs> gaming to you, Mrs. Yeah. Murphy. Um, <laughs> yeah, I... No, but, some bin bags. <laughs> now, how do you feel about streaming digital content and never truly owning your games collection. And they're like, what games collection? You're like, oh dear, we're in trouble here. <laughs> what if I told you it's called Project Storm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, yeah, like, I don't know. Apparently, as I say, that was apparently put on hold when COVID happened. And since then, like, that's when Stadia has, you know, came and went. So, Maybe Walmart now would be a little bit more cautious about yeah, launching like, projects. No on. fucking way are we touching that. It's like, <laughs> let's, st- let's stick with what we know. Uh, Sausages, bin bags, peas. The, the three, three pillars. Core pillars of the Walmart empire. <laughs> uh, Matthew, do you know, we've mentioned it a few times, but that Fortnite, it is apparently, uh, it's quite popular. It is quite popular and it has made Epic Games an absolute mint. Uh, It has made them, well, in its first two years, so more by now, but in its first two years, Fortnite made Epic over $9 billion. 5.4 in 2018, 3.7 in 2019. And during the trial, Sweeney added that Epic themselves... Uh, just across the board, have made made five point one billion in gross revenue in twenty twenty. I mean, listen, for it, it's a popular game, but nine billion dollars, and it's it's when you compare it to, like, what they made off of, say, Rocket League or whatever else, it's still you know millions, and in some cases, hundreds of millions, but. I don't know. It feels like we forget Fortnite because it's just sort of part of the the social consciousness now and part of video games. And it's just like, yeah, it's just there. We don't really kind of, I suppose, like Roblox to an extent. So we, we don't understand it, but people like it. And, you know, yeah, crack on, spend your money. Mm-hmm. Nine billion in total. That's a lot. That's, That's a, a lot, lot of, of money. kids paying for like a fucking dab animation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, they'd probably call me an old fogey, but I'd be like, you could probably spend that money elsewhere. But you like what you like, and more luck to you, I suppose. But that- there's always been fads yeah. ever since we were kids. There's always been a fad designed to eat pocket money. You I know? suppose that. Yeah, exactly. It's, child- it's digital now. I mean, I don't think. You know, in 30 years' time, they won't be looking back on their Fortnite purchases with as much affection as my generation is looking back on Pogs, 
monster in my pocket, Boglins, um, marbles, yo-yos. Premier League stickers. Uh, Premier League stickers. Every, every generation has something that they just waste their pocket money on. So, you know, if it's Fortnite, crack on, youngsters. Yeah, you know, go do, for it. Do, it, do what you like. Uh, but that information about how much Fortnite has made is especially pertinent when it comes to the free games on the Epic Store. Ooh, um, tell me more. So let me pull this up here. Uh, so a guy by the name of Simon Carlos, mm-hmm. who is the founder of Game Discover Co., he, well, he spotted a document uh, that was part of this trial. And in this document, it shows what Epic paid developers in the first nine months of the Epic Game Store to release their games for free. So, you know, those, those games that change every two weeks. I don't know what it is at the minute, but yeah, but download this for free. Alien Isolation was there a couple mm. of weeks ago. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and Epic have paid $11.6 million in total. Far cry from $9 billion, but... You know, uh, the most epic. So I, thought you about, I thought you were saying Far Cry for nine billion. They paid nine billion for Far Cry. I was like, wow, they 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 paid way too much. <laughs> they value that pagan min, that sharply dressed man. But yeah, the the most epic paid for a single game was one point five million for uh, the Batman Arkham trilogy, and Subnautica was second with one point four million. I mean, technically, that's three games, Batman. But- yeah. Uh, okay well yeah fair enough yeah 500 grand for each game Subnautica then is top with 1.4 <laughs> but but Mutant Year Zero is uh, just below that and 1 million I was like so it was a great game yeah but uh, I don't know I just I kind of did, it, was, it would be one I wouldn't expect them to pay uh, in comparison to say Subnautica but what is maybe more interesting is the lesser amounts at the bottom of the table they gave mm. out 50k for Super Meat Boy, 45k mm. for Rhyme, and nothing, zero, for Metro 2033 Redux. But you don't think that was tied into them having Metro Exodus as an exclusive? That's a fair point, but quite possibly, and I would say I, even almost definitely, yes. I thought this, I thought this was interesting with the indie games, because you wonder if it's <clears throat> simply a matter of like who negotiated aggressively. Because some mm. of these indie games, the the difference between the numbers, you think this isn't based on any innate quality in the game itself. This is just going to be some people played like hardball. A hundred percent. Like what's interesting about this doc is they sort of value it when it comes to new users. So like Subnautica, for example, has the best return on investment because that got them 804,000 new accounts. And Epic puts that down to... Uh, $1.74. And then the using those metrics, the worst game for Epic was Celeste because that cost them 750 k and 62000 signed up. So that's $12 per new user. Yeah, that's the thing. If I was the other indies, I'd be looking at Celeste going, man, I should have held out for yeah, totally. 750 k because that's quite a leap over some of these other ones. Yeah, no, to, to, like, all, all, like all these figures coming out, the nine billion uh, that they've made for Fortnite, um, and yeah, like Mutant Year Zero, uh, costing a million, or Celeste costing seven hundred and fifty, and then like Rhyme costing forty five. If I'm the developers of Rhyme, I'm looking at that and going, shit, like we we sold ourselves too short there. We mm. we we should have really held on and asked for X amount more or or whatever it is. So this information, hopefully, would actually benefit developers in the future. Like, this is also from the first nine months. So, like, mm. yeah, this is up to whatever it is, November 2019. So, uh, yeah, well, like, we, we don't know what... Um, well, the, the the more recent games, what they have been getting, I suppose. Uh, but do the freebies have a shelf life? Because the document says that out of the 18.5 million people who got a free game, so in total, no, mm. got a free game in this period, only 7% of them made a purchase afterwards. So mm. they, so like, whereas the new accounts are like, the Epic are going to value them. The people who... The people who only come along and download Batman for free 
and then go back to Steve. But that's but then that's just maybe what you've got to do to like have any kind of foothold. That's still like a million people making a purchase who may not have made a purchase before. Say they bought a fifty pound. They wouldn't have all bought a fifty dollar game. Uh, but like, I I get what you're saying though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can still sort of see a version. You know, maybe that's just you know. Steam is so established that to have, you know, to make any kind of dent on it, this is kind of what you've got to go for. Um, I actually thought, like, when you look at those figures, uh, you know, that the amount they were making for Fortnite, and then they're like, they spent 11.6 on these free games. You're like, well, that's nothing. You know, that's, you know, if you just made 9 billion, I mean, <laughs> who cares, right? 11's easy, an easy decision to make. As I say, I, I would hope that... I suppose developers would maybe see what other developers have charged, uh, see that they've made nine billion off of Fortnite, and go. We 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 need to be charging them more for our free games, um, but Epic have spent a little bit more on uh, exclusives. Right, as of September twenty nineteen. Epic have spent over one billion dollars on one hundred and five exclusives. They have this thing called the aggressive pursuit model, and this is apparently going to see them aim for fifty two exclusives in twenty twenty one, thirty six in twenty two, and uh, thirty four in twenty three. But the big one out of that figure uh, that they paid for was Borderlands three for six months. Of exclusivity. Mm. Uh, Epic paid take to $115 million. Now, the total mm. amount was something like 140 because that included the Handsome Jack collection. Um, uh, what was it? Civ 6, I think, as well. But yeah, just for Borderlands 3 was $115 million. But they made their money back in two weeks. There you go. Which is wild. Uh, so b- because of all this spending, Epic is actually losing money on the Epic Game Store. But yeah, by 2023, th- Epic is, uh, they're, they're forecasting that the Epic Game Store will become profitable. There you go. I, gu- I guess this is what you have to do. Like, uh, as you say, when Steam is, Steam is top dog. Like, well, you know, you got to go out there and spend some cash to try and mm. get people interested uh, because people won't be interested when it comes to your actual, your, your launch or your client because you lack a lot of the things that Steam does. Mm. I guess you just gotta, yeah, gotta spend some money. you got to spend money to make money. Six months though. That's a lot of cash to get six months of Borderlands. I mean, yeah, but if that it, it paid worked. For itself, if that paid back, yeah. It if worked, I guess, sense. so... So yeah, I mean, it must be a good old good old time for the teams involved. Yes, yeah, big you can time. Sell them something juicy. Um, in that same document, uh, it was revealed. Uh, in the same document where uh, the figures they paid on exclusives, uh, and that document was from late 2019. So things may have changed, but uh, it said that Epic got exclusivity on the next Saints Row. And Dead Island 2, the development hell <laughs> Dead Island 2. Uh, and also, it, uh, in that document, it says that Epic offered uh, Sony $200 million for, um, for their first party exclusives, um, right. which they obviously didn't get. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I, I mean, like, yeah, maybe mm. this is, like you said, the fact that they... Like Metro was down as zilch. Like maybe that was because of other Metro style dealings. Mm. Like Dead Island 2, uh, Saints Row. You're, to- you're talking... Um, that, that Saints Row isn't previous. They just in effect announced that. I, do, I can't remember if they... It, it's, I mean, not it's not officially like sh- announced. It's not a shocker that there would be more Saints Row at some point. But I didn't think... It's not like... Anything is announced. No, it's it, not. Nothing has been made official. Dead. I imagine spending money on Dead Island Two, the non-existent Dead Island Two. I mean, <laughs> that's insane. Maybe that's why there's so much pressure on them, like handing it off to different studios, because they're like, we so, look, Epic have given us 
a bit yeah. of cash. We need to get this that out the door. Proper emperor, emperor has no clothes. I mean, even if it did exist, I, I don't rate Dead Island one at all. I think it abs- I think it fucking blows that game. Um, the idea that you would want, oh god, what? I don't get Dead Island two at all. Dying Light, way, way more interesting, way better game. Um, to, just to put the boot into Dead, Dead, uh, Dead Island two there. Mm. That's uh, appreciated. Uh, I'm sure over the next while more things will come out in the Epic Epic versus Apple stuff. But it's been quite interesting seeing the... I mean, it always is, seeing the kind of peek behind the curtain, the private exchanges mm. that people have in emails and things. Um, oh, it's, good. it's always good to have a little, a little sneaky peek, yeah. hoping they haven't said anything too embarrassing, or just seeing how people kind of carry themselves in emails you know like if they're good at spelling and things like that it's quite that's always a pleasure yeah where do they put they had all those leaks from Hollywood like I don't know five six years ago where it was basically like all the executives that I think it was like Sony Pictures and they're all just like slagging off the Hollywood talent and they're all like oh you know we're not putting Russell Crowe in anything anymore because he's too fat and all this kind of stuff and you're like oh yikes (laughs) (laughs) Whenever that stuff happens, I instantly become like more polite in my emails for about six months, just because you know it does get to you. Think, mm, oh what yeah, if, what if? Do, do would I want to be, you know, rated as a person based on my emails? Maybe not. But then, as you said, you know, it's six months, and then you just turn back to a cretin afterwards. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, after yeah. all that, bu- after business corner, it's time for a bit of tech corner and a fun one this week, Matthew, Ooh. that I think you may enjoy because it involves the little plumber boy. Oh, yes. So, like um, you know, this isn't uh, exactly official. <laughs> but, oh, no, no shit. <laughs> but someone called Dario Sama has used some sort of black magic that I don't understand, and they've implemented ray tracing in Mario 64 on PC. Uh, If you're watching this, what you're watching is from Dario Sama's YouTube, youtube youtube.com forward slash Dario Sama, if you want to have another look. Um, And yeah, it it, it just, it looks quite nice. It's it's all, every surface, like, you know, the little torches in the castle? They all mm. now cast their own lights. Oh, but if you get old Steel Mario, it's got to be amazing. Yes, Steel Mario has, uh, I don't know, there's reflective surfaces off him and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, it's quite, it's quite nice. I enjoy when people go around poking around old games and getting them looking all pretty and whatever else. I guess this is, you know, this is what PC has over other, other platforms. Yeah, get your mitts off it though. It's made by Nintendo. <laughs> Nintendo own this. Well, I always like these things because they 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 get um they get done and then they get everyone covers them online and then Nintendo's like, well, I'll better get rid of that though. <laughs> They're so litigious. I mean, I I I I have to hand <laughs> it to Nintendo because they they've done an excellent job of positioning themselves as happy go lucky. But my God, you do not mess with Nintendo. Yeah, like I mean, they that's would all bring got. down I know, the hammer. All they've got is their characters, and you know, protecting their copyright on it, whatever. I know not everyone agrees, but you know, whatever. Um, the the thing that makes me is is when there's this sort of vibe around these things now of like you're almost not meant to talk about them because people are like it's unfair if you draw attention to it. And you're like, who's it for? Who are they making it for? It's like I've made this thing, but I don't want anyone to know about it because then it will get destroyed by Nintendo. Yeah. I don't really understand that dynamic. I don't really know what people are asking, you know. Mm. If you're making it for the, I guess, just for the comfort of your own home, then that's fine, but... If you're putting uh, it out there, you're putting it out there for people to see, yeah, surely. Well, this idea that somehow, like, websites are to blame for covering interesting things that people have made and put out there. They're like, mm. oh, I, want, I didn't want it to be this big, because now I'm <laughs> fucked. And you're like, well, you know... Don't make good stuff, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Ma- look, you know, if you're interested, go to Dario Sama's um, YouTube and figure out how to, to, I don't know, download it or whatever this is. Uh, I, but I, I or like else, unless Mario it's gone. If, if it's a 50 quid 
absolutely zero effort port by Nintendo. <laughs> so you, did you enjoy the three, that one, whatever it was? I mean, what was that called? You know, it's, it's, yeah, it's like two 10 out of 10s in there. So yeah, 3D All-Stars. Absolutely budget as hell, but you know. Nintendo own it. <laughs> then they're allowed to do that if they want. I mean, that's it's, it's, it's their it's their right to be that's budget and shit. But it is their right to it's be. It's their that. right to be budget and shit. It is. Yeah, I mean, it, it is. Of course, it is. Yeah, it's everyone's right to be budget. And Sorry, shit. that's a bit of a that is a bit of a centrist dad take. I apologise. <laughs> I mean, uh, smash me a bow. <laughs> uh, well, let's see if you have any centrist dad takes as we discuss oh. the games we've been playing over the last seven days. Show and tell, show and tell. We can't afford a proper jingle. Jingle. It's meant to be jingle. Yes, show and tell is the part of the PC Gaming Week spot where we take you through the video games we've been playing over the last seven days. Days and myself and Matthew have been playing a video game over the last seven days. The big video game, the one video game, Resident Evil Village. It is here, it Matthew. Say, it doesn't say Resident Evil on the title screen, does it? Yeah, gutting. I don't think they said it in seven either, did they? Nah, that's rubbish. It's been Bullshit. downhill ever since they didn't say it in. Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition. I wanted them to say Wii Edition. <laughs> bring it back, Capcom. Bring it back. Yeah, bring back Resident Evil, man. Uh, but yes, Resident Evil Village is the 108th game in the Resident Evil series, but the 8th in the mainline Resi. Uh, and this takes place shortly after Resident Evil 7, but, you know, you don't need to worry about playing Resident Evil 7 beforehand because, well, for, for we'll get on to the story and all that later. But there is also, and more games should do this, please. I know Gears does it as well. But like a previously on. Give me them. I like them. Um, mm. But yeah, we're, we're not going to spoil anything, but we'll, we'll talk about the story later on, I suppose. In case you, you are invested in the, the lore of Resident Evil. Yeah. But yeah, in this you're playing as... The everyman Ethan Winters again, but rather than your main goal being to try and find your wife like it was in Seven, you're trying to find your baby daughter in this and we'll leave it at that. But in order to find her, you've rocked up to this nondescript village in a part of Europe where all the humans have American accents, Matthew. Yeah. And the rest of them are monsters of some kind. Yeah. And you have to defeat four big bads and then a big, big bad in order to get your daughter Rose back. Mm. All right, so I I think we're coming at this from slightly different angles, which should make for a very enjoyable discussion. But yeah. for me, this is like football team A versus football team B and the match that they would play because this is very much a game of two halves. Right. <laughs> the first half is, I suppose it, it is a Metroidvania light uh, or, or the Metroidvania light aspects of the village, which is the hub world you keep coming back to, as well as the first two big bads. Mm. I think that's some good survival horror. And the second half is your other two big bads in the conclusion of the game. And that is more full-on action-packed first-person shooter. So, I suppose, how we tackle this is maybe the village itself, Matthew. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a terribly large area, but uh, in my view, what Capcom do with it, I think is quite good. So what what did you think of the, the central area? Yeah, I think it, you said Metroidvania there, um, which I, I guess is kind of like you come back to this central area several times with new bits of equipment, which kind of excavate new layers of it. So there are certain interactive elements you can only use when you've got certain bits of equipment. So. There's always a reason to return to it in theory. Um, actually, I think I'd, I'd pretty liken it more to like the, the Tomb Raider reboots is what it reminded me of. Um, yeah. In terms of like, it's like very key based. It's, it's not like, I, I, I wouldn't say this, like you don't get any abilities that kind of change your perception of this space. Um, but it does recycle the space and sort of find new things to do with it. 
Um, I think you're right. Most of that happens in the first half of the game. Um, you know, you sort of start off in the village and then you do something else and you kind of come back to the village. But I felt like after that second trip, I'd really seen like 90% of what they were going to do with it. You know, there's another, there's a couple of extra bits you can kind of pick off a bit later. Um, but I, I did like that side of it. I liked the idea of this space that you kind of came back to. It would kind of repopulate with different enemies. So there were like different combat challenges when you returned. Um, I think they could have like easily had another trip to it and and that maybe would have like uh, changed the pace of the second half a bit more. I will say I don't actually have the same problems with you in terms of the two halves. Like for, for my money, I felt like this was a like a, a basically a big old kind of greatest hits of Resident Evil, and there are different stretches of the game that feel like different games. I actually enjoyed kind of all of them pretty much, so I didn't really have as big a, a beef with the second half. Like I've seen this line a lot that the second half is is like very weak or too actiony or whatever, but. There's a lot of action in the first half, and I quite like the action. I much prefer the action in this than I did in Resident Evil 7. Now, that's a game that I think is weaker in its second half. I, I mean, yes, that does also go very action. But that's, that, 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 that game, I think, you know, starts off as a really great horror game and then becomes a slightly stuffy action game. I think this is a decent action game from start to finish that occasionally goes full on horror in a very effective way. Yeah, like... Come on, exploding werewolf's heads is fun. Listen, I prefer the survival horror aspects of this video game. Yeah. But I also enjoy smashing werewolves' heads open with a shotgun. You get, you get to do a lot of that in the second half. Yes, no, you, you 100% do. I just... All fear is just sucked out of us. It's not, it's not a scary game. I think it's a really entertaining... I, 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 there was only one section which won't spoil... Um, which I think where it goes like out and out horror game. And it is really, you know, it's, it's quite effective. Um, but outside of that, I thought it went, you know what, I'm just going to be, um, it's more like Resident Evil. It is actually more like Resident Evil 4. It's like entertaining, you know, it's just a entertaining, gooey headshots. Uh, it's quite easy, um, I will say, on, on like normal. Um, I don't think I died at all in like regular combat. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the kind of silliness of it. It's it, for me like Resident Evil has, you know, it can be very, very silly, and it has been very silly in the past. And like for me, this ticked a lot of that silliness boxes. And I feel like how people feel about this game as a whole might depend on their appetite for like the sillier element of Resident Evil. Like I like Resident Evil Six, for example, which a lot of people are like super down on, but. You know, this is definitely more coherent than six, but it has a similar kind of like, like, oh, what mad bullshit are they doing next? Um, where seven was a bit better behaved in that regard. Like seven felt like a kind of conscious effort to to be like tonally kind of more coherent for the whole thing, I think. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, I just... It, it goes a little bit too power fantasy for me. Yeah. You have that shotgun I mentioned. You have like a grenade launcher. You have magnums. You're a, you're a killing machine. And at one point I had maybe at two separate points, actually, I had something like over 200 pistol bullets. Like the, yeah. the, the ammo is so plentiful that not even fit, like not even like, uh, I know I said, you know, the, the whole sense of fear is sort of gone, but even just tension. Because though at the beginning, the the firefights with the, these werewolves that are like shambling towards you, and they're very jittery, so trying to get a shot on them can sometimes be be difficult. But they are tense because you might only have a handful of shotgun shells or a clip or two of handgun bullets. Mm. But then at the halfway point, you're laying no landmines. You're firing pipe bombs, baddies. Yeah, uh, it, it just. And look, I, I do get it. Like Resident Evil has always had weapons in it. It's always had grenade launchers. It's always had uh, playable characters that have had some sort of combat training. That's where it slipped into just being like a bit of an entertaining romp for me. I was like, oh, okay, it's not scary and it's not really a survival game. You know, okay, it's not the nicest feeling shooter. It's not like fucking Doom or anything. Yeah. But, you know, there is a sense of um, like... I am fundamentally enjoying everything. Um, like the, the the kind of 
there's a late game area where you spend quite a stretch of time. Um, oh, woof. I see. I liked it. It's self it's self contained, but it's got like enemies with like big glowing weak spots, which I quite liked fighting. I thought they were quite fun. Um, yeah, I, I really don't have the beef with that area that other people seem to have. Um, didn't you like the shooting at the glowing weak spots? Isn't that satisfying? That was satisfying in that it was something a bit different. Yes, they have a sort of an Iron Man esque thing in their their chest, but it, it oh, that bit just went on too long. I found the map muddled that just went on very long i found you see like that's that like that's how i felt about the sh- the ship in resident evil 7 for example and i was worried that when i went there i thought oh is this going to be a similar deal but I, I don't know i just i just had a laugh with it i don't know if it's because i was just so overpowered at that point and i was just churning towards it I mean, i'm not i'm not going to say the second half is like as strong or enjoyable as some of the stuff. I think the castle in the first half and the, the bit after the castle is really, and the, the village visit in between is, is probably the high point of the game. I just don't think it plummets the way that some people suggest it does. Do you think that, and I suppose, listen, I'm not calling for tank controls to come back. For the love of God, of course <laughs> I'm not. But, you know, the fact that like, because somebody may say, well, Res- yeah, you know, Resident Evil has always had grenade launchers, has always had these things. But mm. the tank controls sort of worked with that because it made firing your handgun awkward. Whereas here, you're just, and again, yes, you said, you know, it's not Doom, it's not whatever, but it's, it feels too slick, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I, well, this is the thing. I, I, I would say, like, it didn't feel too slick for me because I was just enjoying, you know, it was yeah. like a good, a good level of power. I was enjoying being, being kind of powerful in that way. Um, but uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, this is what I talk about. Like, I think what we want and what we kind of maybe value in, in this game is, is just slightly different. Um, I will say like, I, w- w- one thing I, I, I really liked about it was that, um, I think it's a very polished game. Like, I think it's released in a really good state. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't have any, like, tech problems with it. Um, I think it shows you a lot. I think it, it's, it's kind of relentlessly paced. Um, you know, it, it, you know it, on paper, it's much bigger than Seven. It took me about 10 hours to get through it. Um, and that was kind of taking my time with backtracking and everything. I feel like I, I kind of really milked the world for everything it was worth. Um, there's not a lot of like I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of fat. I mean, you obviously don't like that last area as much, um, but I think it like whips you between a lot of locations. And also, and like kudos to Capcom for this. Uh, I think they actually held back like a lot of what is in the game. Like they they focused a lot of their marketing on like the village and the giant vampire lady. Of course. Um, when actually they're they're I mean that probably accounts for the first quarter of the game. I'd say. Uh, yeah. Which brings us on to our bet, because I said this in the preview. I said, everyone is talking about this vampire lady, and I think she's going to be the first boss, and then she's out of it. Um, Within four hours, I, I think, was the... I said, if she's not dead in the first four hours, I'll eat my hat. Um, so you, you have a hat with you? I have a hat. I have a promotional cyberpunk samurai baseball cap. Excellent. You can eat the hat that Keanu Reeves has worn. Uh, yes. W- will you be eating the hat? I will not be eating the hat. So as not to spoil, we'll leave it at that. It's weird. I thought I'd miss it, but I actually kind of liked the, the other kind of big villains of it enough that I, I didn't really mind. I thought they were, I thought they were, you know, they're, they're very different. And they've got, you know, that, that, that's what's interesting about the game is that like each each of the big four bosses kind of has their own like stretch of the game, um, which has quite different tone to it, which, which is the thing I sort of enjoyed. Um, but you know, we're, we're talking about the big lady and uh, we mentioned about the village and there are like, there's a bit of back and forth thing. There's some light puzzling in the village as well. You know, yeah, you have a tool, yeah. you have a key, you go back. Uh, Dimitrescu's castle is probably the, the only other area where you get that a bit. It's similar to uh, like the, the uh, police department or the yeah. uh, mansion in that, you know, yeah, you'll pick up a key and you'll now be able to open this door and get in this passageway and do this puzzle and so on and so forth. Um, 
I I really enjoyed the castle. I kind of lump that in with the village because it feels like it has the same sort of feeling about it. I don't think um, she sort of serves a similar role as Mr. X in the Resident Evil 2 remake, you know, where she's kind of patrolling the castle. Does she? Because I was trying to figure out, is she Mr. X from Resident Evil 2 remake or is she Nemesis from Resident Evil 3? I think she, she's, for a stretch of it, she's straight up Mr. X. But that's that's the telling thing that you didn't that you couldn't really sense that I think is an indicator that it's it's either not as effective or it, it's a trick that only really works once. Yeah, because like Mr. X, when it happens and you realize, oh, shit, he can come through doors now. It's like really, really scary here. I was like, oh, OK, you know, I, I've got this like I just have to run loops to get like, you know, the castle is built on a couple of looping kind of layouts. So it's quite easy to kind of like get behind her and get her out of the way. She she is scripted for quite a chunk of it. Um, and it's quite effective because like she's this sort of presence without you having any direct interaction. Um, but once it kind of kicks off proper, um, yeah, she is basically like roaming the, the central bit of the castle. It just didn't, it didn't really work as well for me. Like I felt like that's, that I think they happened upon some like amazing like alchemy with Mr. X in the Resident Evil 2 remake. And I know that that's an idea that was in the original Resident Evil 2, but I think they really fully delivered on it in, in the remake. Here, like, I, I feel like they've got to kind of put, they've got to stop doing that now. Like, they've actually already exhausted it after two games. Yeah. But, uh, like, it's still, like, this is the thing, even if it's not particularly scary, it's still entertaining to have, like, the big, you know, and she's getting, like, increasingly cross with you because of, other stuff you're doing in the castle and that's yeah, quite and, fun. Yeah, like there, there is some tension when you're hearing her clip-clopping around in her heels. Yeah, but I think, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, it, 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 is, it is a good section though. I will say, like, if you've watched Weak Spot up until now, like, I was quite cool on the demos. I actually think they picked quite bad sections for the demos or things that didn't really show this game at its best. Um like particularly the village demo, just because I think at, right at the start your pistol is so underpowered that the combat is 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 um, especially flat. Mm-hmm. Um, but it only takes a couple of upgrades, maybe finding a shotgun, and the whole thing does get like a lot spicier. You would say too easy, you know, potentially. Um, but yeah, it's weird how it goes from like like aggressively flimsy to just like absolute Rambo. Um, <laughs> it really does. I would still say like Rambo is fun, <laughs> but like the mo- the peak for me. And listen, we won't go into like b- b- spoiler spoilers. I mean, I say the peak for me. I- I'd imagine the peak for you. I'd imagine the peak for a lot of people is the second area, which you know everyone raving about Dimitrescu. Pah, it's all about Angie. It is all about this little doll called Angie. Like it is by quite a margin the best part of the game. It feels like a modern survival game. It feels like something from, say, Frictional Games as catalog, a Soma, perhaps. No, but it, it, it feels, yeah, it, it feels like survival horror in twenty twenty one. You know, it is it is good. I think it is especially effective though because it is a self contained segment. I think if the whole game is that, I wouldn't want to play it because it would just be too stressful and too intense. I think it kind of says, you know, for like an hour or an hour and a half or whatever, like I'm going to do. Um, you know, we're going to be like a proper scary, you know, kind of what a bit, a bit more like some of the effective bits in Resident Evil Seven. Like I actually think the opening of Resident Evil Seven is 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 pretty scary and pretty full on, and it kind of has more of that vibe. Um, like it, it's it's just it's it's claustrophobic. Like as you said, it's all in one area, so there's a great atmosphere. It's I think it's it's expertly done because you're just constantly on edge despite the fact that the place isn't overrun by werewolves or anything like that. But you're just... Do you know what? It, it's like... Do you know what Demetrescu walking around her place? And there is some tension sometimes, yeah, but you know you know you're know you safe other times. In the second area, I, f- I felt always on edge. I thought something was always going to, you know... Yeah. Do something nasty to me. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that's, that, that's fair, but... Yeah, I, I still stand by the fact that I'm glad it was like sort of uh, like one strand of the game rather than a, a more substantial thing. I think it, I think if you know it could have outstayed its welcome, or if they if they tried to kind of repeat 
a similar set piece like a bit later in the game it might not have worked i mean i think it's unfortunate that kind of put next to that what follows maybe seems slightly weaker though i I think the stuff at the lake is absolutely fine as a as a change of pace it's you know the game's never boring you've got to say that for it yeah no i i I will yeah it it, it is that's actually like you know that's no small achievement you know that's that's reasonably hard to make a, a a you know a consistently kind of evolving moving thing like um I, I i do to your point i do think angie's bit would you you can't do that for 12 hours like no you, we, i know like you can't you can't i just I, I personally wouldn't want to play that game you know like for me it's more of like uh you know it's tapping more into what they're doing with like Outlast or something, which is something mm-hmm. I can only really stomach for like an hour and an hour and a half before it's just, I, you know, I don't have any enjoyment of being that sort of highly strung for that long. Um, but here for them to kind of, you know, put the, put on the foot of the gas. So it's very disciplined for them to like keep it as short as they do really. Um, and they must have known they were onto like a really killer scene with it. Cause it's really, really effective. I, I actually played, um, I played most of the game on PS5 um, with my uh, f- fancy 3D audio headphone things. Ooh. And that section is absolutely brutal sound design because the house is so creaky and cr- it's such a creepy soundscape that even with yeah. like not a lot going on for stretches of it, you are constantly like, uh, uh, uh. Um, <laughs> I can imagine. Um, <laughs> but one thing we haven't spoken about yet. And I think we're going to have to give it about two, two and a half hours. Matthew, the, the story. Mm. Oh, I think it, I, listen, I can't tell whether it's a masterpiece or an utter shambles. Because, yes, it's, it's, not, it's not trying to be funny, but this is, this is hilarious at points. <laughs> like, and yeah, I'm not going to go into spoiling story or anything like that. But like, I don't know. Do you think it's it's campy or do you think it's shoddy? What what is it in your I, opinion? I think I think it's campy as hell. I think this is like, I think Resident Evil has had this this um, like strand to it before. It, it's behaved like this before. It's gone like big, big, silly, silly. Um, the little shit I, child I, from Resident Evil Four, for example. Yeah, it's kind of got yeah a lot of that energy. Um, I think the, I, the, the the problem with it is that Ethan Winters at the heart of it is a terrible, terrible character. I mean, he's just, there's nothing to him. He's a really miserable man. And he has the most, he has the wildest adventure of like <laughs> any protagonist. Like some of the shit he goes through in this game, like the punishment his hands take is just, it's absolutely laughable. I mean, there's a scene, we won't spoil it in the castle, where something happens to one of his hands that I mean, it really did make me burst out laughing. Uh, how dumb it was, and but particularly how like totally like nonchalant he was about what happened to him. Yeah, um, it's a re- yeah, it's it's a really silly game. He's really weak. I think the villains are really good fun. Um, you may not enjoy fighting all of them equally or what they do with all of them equally, but I think they're that you know that there's a bit quite early on in the game where it foreshadows what's going to come. Sort of basically introduces you to the kind of the villainous cast of the game, and I actually think it's a really great scene because you're like. Oh, okay. Like, you know, what's all this about? Like, this. I thought this was just going to be like a big vampire lady and werewolves, but you know, there's 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 a bit more kind of going on in the game, kind of variety wise, um, than they've let on in like the marketing, or whatever. Um, so that was that was really good fun. Um, I quite like the Heisenberg character. Uh, yeah, like as a big campy villain. I, I thought it was fun, um, uh, and I, and I liked the boss fight with him, which we won't go into. Um, oh God, but... that made me laugh. Like, like <laughs> uh, there are, like, there's one part in particular that I'd love to explain. I think I text you it, but and I, I can't. Of course, I can't say because it it's proper spoilers. But that part, I was pissing myself, and I was like, <laughs> "Am I meant to be pissing myself here? I don't think I am." And and yeah, that's it's... where that's where I struggle with the like. Yes, I think some parts are campy. But I do think some parts are, they veer into shoddiness as well. It, wa- it walks a very fine line. I think it, it expects you to have a deeper emotional connection to Ethan Winters than anyone could possibly be expected to have. Like, at the end, it tries to go for quite a big human note where actually you're like, 
I mean, this guy, I mean, he's just a 3D character model that bits get chopped off occasionally, and I really, I really don't care for the guy. Um, I, I, I will say, whatever the, the content of the story, I think it does have momentum. I think you are always intrigued about what's going to happen next. I think it pulls you through the game very effectively. Like, even the kind of the, the, the central thing of, like, what's going on with Chris Redfield. It's, like, compelling enough that, like, you, you are thinking, oh, I wonder what is going on with him. And, you know, maybe you're, you can kind of guess some of the things happening in this game. But, I, I you know, I felt like I wasn't just playing, I wasn't just churning through it to get to the end for the sake of being able to talk about it, you know, on this. You know, I, 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 mm. I really, I wanted to see it through just to see, like, exactly where it was going, exactly what it was doing, because there's so much weird shit in that village that doesn't kind of sit together very well. And like the MacGuffins that you're collecting, it's quite odd. I mean, there's the, 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 the kind of the, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, it's very again, odd, it, yeah. You can't really spoil it, but you are like, well, I, you know, I am at least intrigued to see what this is going to be. And it, you know, it probably turns out to be a bit more boring or, a, you know, a quite a traditional kind of resi. Oh, right. It's just a, it's you know it'll inevitably end with some big monster um but for the most part i was quite happy you know i was always thinking oh i wonder what's going to happen next which i think is actually quite effective like game making and storytelling in its own way yeah i i mean yes i i have my problems with it but at the same time i i enjoyed playing it like i i think it is a it's a fun it's a fun romp um, yeah. that, that isn't going to test you. I mean, the, the game isn't going to test you much because I don't think it's, it's that difficult. Uh, there's it's plenty difficult of ammo or whatever. You, you, put, you pop it up one difficulty and it suddenly gets weirdly hard. Like it, it wants you to see it through. It really is urging yeah. you and, to. And, and, and it has that classic Capcom or that classic Resident Evil thing specifically of once you get through, you get all these unlockable, you know, new weapons and things. So you're kind of encouraged to do it again, a bit more tooled up. And I imagine you could run several laps of this, like getting increasingly powerful and, and really like leaning into how daft it is or doing the, the, the very hard difficulty. I mean, there's a big difficulty spike right at the start that I think on anything other than normal is um, like actually like surprisingly brutal. Um, Did you play much of Mercenaries actually? Uh, no, so I'm going to put my hands up and say I didn't even know how to unlock it. I finished I, the game. I didn't either. I didn't either. It's not explained well enough at all. I, I thought don't I had think. to download it. Is it even in there? <laughs> so after you finish the game, you you get present. You know, you uh, the game says you have done all these challenges throughout. You've killed X amount of werewolves. You've done this, blah, blah, blah. And you get challenge yeah. points. And what you must do to unlock mercenaries for anyone who's playing it and wants to know is I think it's like 10 challenge, but it's, it's nothing. You basically have to go into, uh, is it options and then extra content on the main menu? It's something like that. And you'll see mercenaries up on top. But why uh, mercenaries just isn't an extra option on the main right. menu after you finish the game? I don't know. I Where don't are know. those SEO articles saying how to unlock mercenaries when you need them? I bet they exist. They didn't exist when I was playing this pre-release. So I got to here and was like, Oh, maybe they haven't like updated the game. Maybe it'll, it'll be downloaded because I know Reverse is coming later. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, no, you you can only yeah, you have to just go into extra content. Oh, yeah, well, maybe I'll play some mercenaries and pass pass judgment on that next week because I do like me some mercenaries, but I haven't had a chance to uh, work out how this one works because <laughs> I'm too stupid. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I might do as well. I might give it a give it a little go. Uh, but yeah, that is the game. That we have played over the last week. Hey, it is a game. It's a, a triple A romp. It's 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 good fun. It is. It is good fun. I've forgotten what it's like to play like a big, expensive, shiny game. It's been a while. It's yeah, not scary. Good fun. Shoot the zo the zombie scary werewolf things. Scary in one bit, and that's the best bit. Uh, but yes, that is Resident Evil Village. So now it is time to test the knowledge of one another in Mystery Steam Reviews. It's time for Mystery Steam Reviews. Yeah! Yes! 
Mystery Steam Reviews is the part of the PC Gaming Week spot where I, Conor Mahern, and he, Matthew Castle, test the knowledge of one another via Steam Reviews that are a mystery. And the rules are as follows. Both I and Matthew bring three Steam Reviews to the MSR Arena, but we omit the name of the game associated with each review. Our opponent must correctly guess the game attached to each review. One correct answer equals one point. While both of us have 90 seconds on each MSR, we both also have help in the form of three lifelines. These lifelines can be used at any stage during battle and also pause the 90 second timer. They can only be used once though, and they are as follows. Question, where the hot seat haver gets to ask a yes or no question. Second opinion, where a second review is given to the warm chair sitter. And genre, where the genre of the game is revealed to the one with the warm arse. Now, this week, the people voted, you have spoken, and this week's theme is video games with multiple endings. I think, you know, a common thing in video games, not every game, but enough games that you would imagine that I and Matthew would have chosen three different ones. We will see. Uh, so... Matthew, let's let's just crack on, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm feeling good. Last week was an absolute storming success uh, for me. You double doomed it. Let's see if we can go for the triple doom this week. A game which doesn't have multiple endings. <laughs> uh, so Matthew, <laughs> yeah, good. I, I'll make note of that. Uh, Matthew, here's your first mystery Steam review. Imagine Fight Club, but with lots of sand. And that's from Spectre. It is recommended, 6.4 hours on record, 6.0 hours, 6, <laughs> at a time review. Matthew, your time starts now. Fight club, but with lots of sand. So I'm thinking dudes punching each other, fighting each other. I mean, what comes to mind instantly was the... I think I'm mixing up like Dead or Alive or Dead or Alive, the volleyball game where there was the girls on the beach. <laughs> but that's not a fighting game, that's a volleyball game. Uh... Uh, so, fighting. You're fighting. It's like Fight Club. Or is it like Fight Club? It's got Brad Pitt in it. You never know what the weirdos on Steam are thinking. Um, give me the genre for this. Okay, pausing the timer at 58 seconds as Matthew uses his genre. So the genre of this game is, according to wikipedia.org, a third-person shooter video game. A third-person shooter. That's like Fight Club. Video game. Restarting the timer like now. Shit review. This sounds like a shitty review. There is a, a shooter in a Fight Club. Is very one is a fighting game. One is a shooting game. Uh shooting games. So there's lots of sand. Desert-based shooting games. Um. Oh, I know what it is. I can't think of the fucking name. It's the one in Dubai. It's the one in Dubai. Um, it's got a military sounding name it's not like not insurgency there's like there's like a thing that's called like insurgency sandstorm or something or sandstorm oh it's the it's the it's the it's the you know the apocalypse now kind of a half darkness one it's um 10 oh, seconds it's, um spec ops uh, the line. Spec Ops the line. Is that your final one? Yeah. I'm not sure where they're going with Fight Club on this, unless it's like... Uh, well, it's pretty spoiler, isn't it? Yeah. Sure. Fight Club, but with lots of sand. Now, initially, you thought Fight Club, they're on about Edward Norton and Meatloaf <laughs> kicking the shit out of each other. Uh, something set in a desert, perhaps. Use your genre third-person shooter. You've ended up on Spec Ops The Line, which is indeed a third-person shooter. Occurs in Dubai. There is lots of sand in it. But Fight Club, okay. how's, how's it related to Fight Club? Unless you are the guy, unless there's a twist ending and you are the baddie. I don't know. Matthew, I can tell you that the correct answer is... Spec Ops The Line! Yes! So yeah, it's the fight club part of it isn't necessarily the fighting part. It's the Oh, and it isn't at all. There, it's there that is part. no <laughs> There is no fist fighting. <laughs> it isn't necessarily like Fight Club and you're like, no, it's not at all. No, it no, no but hang on, hang on. No, it is like Fight Club. 
It's just not that part of Fight Club. It's Which this I would part say is of Fight the, Club. I would say it's the definitive part of Fight Club. It's a load of guys fighting in a basement. I but mean, well, listen, yeah, I but what, what, would, co- what would come into your head got, afterwards? I'm just saying. Eh. Matthew, could I have my first mystery Steam review, please? The combat is pretty poor, and a lot of the mechanics are dated and very reminiscent of the early 2010s, but the story is great, and this pr- this is probably the best of the series when it comes to exploring the world history and politics of the universe, says Kenny Press F. Recommended 24.6 hours on record. Time starts now. Oh, man. I mean, exploring the world, history, politics, RPG, surely. Um, but the rest of it is very hard to latch on to something. Reminiscent of the early 2010s. Combat is pretty poor. Could be Skyrim? Combat is pretty poor in Skyrim. You know, religion, lore, politics. Hmm... That could be fuck it. it could be Fallout as well, maybe, I suppose. Um Now, se- a second opinion would shed a lot on it uh, uh shed some light on it. This does feel like a Bethesda game. Oh, I don't want to use my second opinion yet though. I could just take a punt on Skyrim. I wouldn't. Hold on a second, because it says the combat is reminiscent of the 2010s. But of course it is, because that's when Skyrim came out in 2011. So it's ob- unless he's gone back and played it. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Let's take a punt. Let's take a punt. Is that your final answer? That is my final answer. So, you identified this as potentially an RPG, because it explores a world, a history, and its politics. The combat is very poor, and a lot of the mechanics are dated. Very reminiscent of the early 2010s. You could suggest that that's when it came out. And it does stay to get that. You've said Skyrim. The correct answer is... The Witcher 2. Assassins of Kings. The Witcher 2 does all those things as well. <laughs> yeah, maybe. As well as Skyrim. Vague? I don't know. I think... I think a second opinion would have clarified it because it Probably. made specific reference to it being the second game. Matthew, your second mystery steam review is as follows. Abstract, funny, and can be replayed many times with many endings. Tick. It's a game like no other. I would play this game again, but I'm trying to get the achievement where you don't launch the game for five years. And that's from Eon. It is recommended seven hours on record. Matthew, your time starts now. All right. The achievement where you don't launch the game for five years. I mean, I don't know what that is. So, like, I don't know what game that is. But it's funny. It's a funny game with multiple endings. What's funny? Are there any funny games? Not Resident really. Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil Village is very funny. Doesn't have multiple endings though. Um, a funny game, multiple endings. Could be Stanley Parable. Sort of funny game. It's got technically, it's got more. You know, yeah, I guess it just constantly loops back round. Um, what else is there? Jazz, jazz punk. People think that's funny. Note: other people think that's funny. Um, I don't know if it has an article ends. Uh, Stanley Parable sounds like something you might do something weird with achievements. We can't play it for ages. It's that kind of... <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. So I'm going to say the Stanley Parable. Is that your final answer? Yeah, that's my final answer. That's my final answer. I'm feeling, I'm going to say up front, I'm actually feeling quietly confident about this. Hmm. Hmm. So, abstract, funny. I can't play the game for five years. I have to get an achievement. What could this game be? So, 
That achievement thing didn't twig anything in you, so you drill down on funny games or games that people perceive to be funny. Humor is subjective, I suppose. But you've ended up on the Stanley Parable, a game that does have multiple endings. You know, is funny. Does it have that achievement? Matthew Castle. The correct answer is... The Stanley Parable! You should have been quietly confident, because you were correct. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, my whole shtick on this show is based around, like, being salty. But when I win, I don't know what to do. I literally don't know what to do with myself. Well, like, then your shtick turns from salty to... <laughs> I can't think of a food that's... Co What's a cocky kind of food? Oh, know. what's the cockiest food? Interesting. Mm. Um, like, some kind of elaborate wedding cake? <laughs> You're like, oh, look at me with all my tears. So you've gone from salt to elaborate wedding cake to multi-tiered Well, no, Madeira. I just don't know. I, like, I just don't know what to... Like, I haven't... I don't know what to do when things are going my way, because... <laughs> You you know. You're doing it now, no, you're, and you're doing it very well. Matthew, <laughs> could I have my second Mystery Steam review, please? Yes, you can. It's funny, and I love the bees, but it's reference to Wicker Man. Very atmospheric, and at times made me sneakily peek at corners to check for enemies. Some jump scares, but not heart attack inducing, says Gad. They recommend it after 31 hours. Okay, time starts now. Oh! <sighs> That reference to the Wicker Man is obviously a big one, but it doesn't... It could be an idiot writing this review. Doesn't bring... I mean, that is true. <laughs> I love the bees with its reference to the Wicker Man. Very atmospheric. Some jump scares. A horror game. See, that's... You don't get that loads. You don't get, like... Or do you? <laughs> Some jump scares. <laughs> I'm just trying to think. Horror games that have multiple endings. You probably do, actually. Do you know what? I'm going to pause the timer at 54. Now is the time to do it. Matthew, could I have my second opinion, please? Oh, okay. Yes, you can. Truly a masterpiece. From the moment it begins, you are trapped, spiralling into a steampunk world. Packed with twists and turns, it will keep lo you locked in your chair and will force you to play till it ends. Okay, restart the timer now. Steampunk. Horror. Bioshock? Soma? <laughs> I mean, Bioshock... You can, There are... Depending on if you harvest the little sisters or not. Oh! That's the only thing now that's coming into my head. Like, uh... Is it like the Wicker Man with his bees? Bees, bees. Are there bees in Bioshock? There's crows. I mean, some jump scares, the splicers. Bioshock, Bioshock, yeah. Is that your final answer? Yeah. You haven't doomed it. You keep close to dooming it. Have you Bioshocked it? <laughs> Just shouting Bioshock. Bioshock, kind of a horror experience, very atmospheric, but you could describe it as steampunk. Stem, you descend into a steampunk world, and you fire bees from your hands. Is it like the Wicker Man? <laughs> the correct answer is... Bioshock. Yes, get in! The Wicker Man bit is fucked. <laughs> bees. I'm glad you chose it then. <laughs> well, I chose it because I thought the bees and the horror, I thought, oh, this is... There's only one horror game which has got, like, bees or hornets. But that, that Wicker Man... I like the idea, like, oh, you know, we can fire bees out of your hands. It's a Wicker Man joke. And you're like, no, the Wicker Man also has bees in it. It doesn't mean it's a Wicker Man joke. Like, this... I'm, I, I hate to break it to you, Gad. That's not how things work. It's not a nod. Just because, like, oh, yeah. B-movie, B-movie, 
That's Wicker a, Man. That's a nod to a Wicker Man, because it's also got bees in it. You got three last week. Did you get three the week before as well? Uh, I don't think I did. I definitely got three last you, week. You though. definitely got three last week, though, so... Can you make it six for six? Be very impressive if you can. So, Matthew, here is your third and final Mystery Steam review. Horny Tetris. And that's from Rutger Roto. It is recommended. 20.2 hours on record. 16 hours. A time of review. Matthew, your time starts now. Oh, boy. Horny Tetris. I mean... I mean, that could be... <laughs> what could that be? Like... There's that new, there's Tetris, Tetris Effect. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's horny. It's got like giant dolphins. It depends what you're horny for. <laughs> if you're horny for windmills, that game's definitely got Tetris in front of some windmills. Um, can I get my second opinion, please? You can. Pause the timer at 101. Right. While Matthew oh. uses his second opinion. So the second opinion of this video game is... Funny Underwear Man Climbs Tower. Funny Underwear Man Climbs Tower. Restarting the timer now. That is not Tetris Effect. <laughs> Who wears underwear? Who wears underwear? The guy's from Ghosts and Goblins when he, he wears boxer shorts under his armour. Uh... Uh, I've got a question. I can't even think what I'd ask. Um, horny Tetris and a dude in his underwear climbs up a tower. I would talk you through my mental process, but I don't think I have one. Um, oh, wait, there's that... Um, the Atlas Puzzler thing. The Persona hey. spin-off. Oh, uh, he's, um... Oh, Catherine! What? Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. Horny Tetris. Tetris Effect, Tetris 99. I don't know. The man in his underwear, that is Catherine. It's not really like Tetris, though. Does that have multiple endings? Catherine does have blocks in it that you move around. Yeah. There is a lot of horniness there as well. There is a man who wears underwear. And you know, he moves blocks around while climbing a tower. But is it the right answer? Matthew, I can tell you that the correct answer is... Catherine. <laughs> What's the mo what are the multiple endings in that one? There's like four different endings. There aren't low. I think there's four. Well, uh, no, sorry, there's me. eight. Eight different endings in it. I wrote it down. That game is too hard for me, so I never got to the end. Uh, so let's see if I can get a consolation goal. I'd like to get it within one of you. Uh, so could I have my third and final mystery steam review, please? Alcoholism with the boys, adultery, edging, sleep deprivation, nudes in the toilet. Easy ten out of ten, says Alfie. They recommend this with 15.9 hours on record. Time starts now. This is Catherine, isn't it? <sighs> Alcoholism with the boys. He's in the pub drinking with the lads. Nudes in the toilet. I don't know, but you do use your phone a lot. Pausing the timer at 110. Could I have the uh, genre, please, Matthew? Okay. Because I think, if I remember correctly, Catherine's genre is quite, uh... uh... This game is described as a puzzle video game. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question as well, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, was this game released... by... Uh, <laughs> is this an Atlas video game? Uh, yes. Catherine. Is that your full answer? That is my final answer. So, you've gone for Catherine, which was, of course, 
the answer to my last Steam review. <laughs> but did I also pick this? It'd be quite odd if I did. It's quite an obscure game for us both to land on. Especially as I didn't know that it had multiple endings. The correct answer is... Catherine! For a split second, for a split second, I thought you were going to say Persona 4 Golden or something. I was just, just a little bit of doubt crept in there, but I was like, no, you use your phone, you drink with the lads, you whatever it was. It was like, no, this makes sense. So did you know Horny Tetris from the word go? Yeah. 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 Well done, though. You did, again, you did very well. You did very well. You convinced me. Oh, to a point. I thought if I could, I thought if I could really sell it to you, but I thought like... My review is even more obvious than it's Catherine, because, god damn it. I think that... Why did we both go for that? That's weird. I don't know. I'm not sure. Is it because we're both pervs? Perhaps. But I am a victorious perv. It's the best kind of perv. So The only yes. kind of perv to be, my friend. Congratulations. Uh, so yeah, that is another Mystery Steam reviews for you, lovely people. So now it's time turn to you indeed you lovely people for your burning questions <laughs> yes burning questions is the part of the pc gaming week spot where we take your correspondence your feedback your burning questions you can email us at any stage throughout the week week spot at rockpapershotgun.com and we may then read out your burning question on the show. So, uh, we have quite a lot. We'll get through as much as we can, but we start out, as always, the excellent and wonderful and one and only Mog, who gave us oh. 10 English pounds on YouTube. God during, bless you, Mog. During the YouTube premiere of the last episode of The Week Spot on youtube.com forward slash rock paper shot. Thank you very much, Mog. You are an absolute star. And Mog said, I'm still hungry. What is the best meal you have ever had in your life? Looking forward to the show as always. I worry that Mog Mog is secretly building like a big psychological profile of us both so that they can answer all our security questions online and rob us. (laughs) Yeah. Mog sent us in a question, 10 English pounds. What's your mother's maiden name? It's not (laughs) one, Mog, but you know. (laughs) But yeah, the, the best meal you've ever had in your life, Matthew. Oh, I mean, that's a, that's a very difficult one. Um, so I, I have one. I don't know why this is a vivid memory in my head, because with all due respect to my sister, uh, well, she's a fine cook, but I wouldn't say, you know, she's not a Michelin star chef. But, you know, still, she's not watching anyway. I don't know why I'm saying all this. But, uh, yeah, she, so I was very sick. This is like... 15 years ago I'd say but I was very sick with like uh, I think I had the flu and I think I had something else as well I think I was just like fucked and she made me enchiladas and chips so that's a doctor's opinion <laughs> yeah uh, I'm sorry to say Mr. Hearn but you are fucked um, I think it was enchiladas and chips and a little sa- it was a, fu- a meal fit for a king and it was just I don't know, I think maybe I was recovering my taste buds or something like that after a while of not having them. I was just so delicious. For some reason, that's a really vivid memory in my head. I think afterwards, we watched some shitty film. It was on telly. I don't know why this has popped into my head. <laughs> Do you remember the yeah. Tenacious D film? Oh, that's yeah. The, for some the reason. Of Destiny. Yeah, for some reason. That, I watched that afterwards. Don't know why that's such a vivid memory in my head, wow. but it is. But yeah, the best meal you've ever had, Matthew. Uh, I, I really like my mum's fish pie. Um, uh, I know I've eaten at some nice restaurants. I tell you what, uh, when, I, when I got married um, three years ago, I had, um, I had to go on a big diet before the wedding. So, so I could like fit into a suit and basically not be, you know, a, a horrendous meat monster for the day itself. And I did a proper like, you know, low carb, low sugar kind of thing, which is basically all I eat. So on the day, I remember being able to eat 
So we had like a fish pie and a pasta, something and a chicken. I just had a bit of everything. And it was like all the stuff I wasn't able to eat. I could drink a really sugary like Pepsi with it or something. And it was just like, you know, and the general day itself was, you know, obviously a very happy day. So that all kind of combined into a, re- a really spectacular food. I love, and yeah, I got married, yada, 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 but the well, food. No, you know what I mean? Like, I have to go I do, into I all do. that. You know, like, I, I, I'm sure you can understand it was a, you know, a powerful day in many other of regards. Um, but yeah, that and, um, yeah, even though I was bricking it about having to do the speech after the meal, I was still able to, like, really enjoy the meal. Yeah, that's, that does sound so nice that was of you. Good deprive yourself of all the nice things and then you get to eat them that sounds lovely Mm. Uh, Nick M got in touch Nick said hey there lads greetings from the land of Oz love the show and always enjoy the warm friendly competition of mystery steam reviews warm and friendly it is you both have a broad experience of computer games on PC and otherwise however is there a game which is considered seminal that you haven't played and you feel you never will Um, I'm very bad on strategy games um so like i've i've tried to and played about like an hour of a couple total war whatevers um but i guess you know one of them must be considered seminal uh i'll tell you what i've never played civilization you have i haven't you haven't yeah i I have like loads (laughs) loads <laughs> like you know yeah so, um no hold on i did i suppose i played a little bit of six but not loads of civilization six but yeah like starcraft never played uh no i've never played that um i've never played i've never played an mmo war i was just about to say war, world of warcraft never played league of legends i've never played no um there's loads like, yeah, you know, there's, 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 there's tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, but even yeah. if I haven't played it, I think I can still fake it. That's the art of games journalism, my friend. So, yeah, fake thank, it till you make it, or just thank, keep faking it. Thank you very much, Nick, uh, for your question. Yadid got in touch. Yadid said, recently played Haven on Steam with my fiance. What are your thoughts on games made primarily as a date slash couples thing, whether it's co-op or PvP, etc.? And what are the best such games you guys would recommend? The recent It Takes Two could also be a great example, by the way. Yadid. Thank you, Yadid. So co-op games specifically, or PvP, multiplayer games specifically date slash couples things. Yeah, I mean... So, you know, I play co-op games with, uh, with Catherine and they always cause us, like, to have major beef with each other. So, like, on the whole, I find co-op isn't great for uh, the, state of, the state of the relationship. Um, we didn't argue too much in take, It Takes Two, actually. We enjoyed that start of it. I think there were only a couple of points where we maybe got a little arsy with each other. Um, and... We really liked Gears 5 in co-op as well. We played that, and that was, that was great fun. Um, but again, it had a couple of points where we maybe argued, but I swear there's, there's lots of things in the parts we've played where we've just had like proper, proper disagreements and bust-ups over it. Like, I, yeah, it, it takes two is very good if, you know, if your other half understands the language of games. If they don't, mm. they'll be... Yeah, they, they'll have a much more difficult time with it. But something I've always thought is good for that type of thing is your, your telltale games. Uh, you know, your, your Walking Deads, your Tales from the Borderlands or oh, whatever like else. Making decisions together. Exactly. Because it's, it's, that's a, if your other half doesn't play games, it is a, you know, it's an easy way to like, what do you think? Do you think they should? Well, I think yeah, this, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah, if they do, then, or do you know what popped into my head? Yeah, it's not PC, but Until Dawn. Oh, mwah, excellent date night game. Uh, but yeah, it takes two uh, overcooked, I suppose, you know. Um, Rayman, excellent, actually. Rayman is a, a, either of them, Origins mm. or Legends, I would say. Uh, who's the next one from? Oh, excellent. The next question is from Sextooth. And Sextooth said, as game critics, 
Do you find you get more blowback for liking a game that most critics or fans disliked, or is the blowback worse when disliking a game that most enjoyed? Guessing it's the latter, but was curious what your what your experiences with that are. Also, do you have games, game genres where you notice posture gets really bad? The last few years, I've tried get getting better with my posture, but I started playing Desperados 3 yesterday and after a few hours I felt some back slash wrist pain and realised my posture had gotten really bad while I was playing. This seems to happen a lot with games like this. XCOM would be another example. And while it can happen in other ga- game genres, it feels like I notice this most with tactics, strategy, management type games. Hope that makes sense. Just something I've noticed myself. Wasn't sure if I was the only one. Thanks. Thank you, Sex Tooth. I suppose because it's probably a bit quicker, the second question... I mean, I would say, yeah, that's fair. Like tactics, strategy, management games. I would say stra- uh, your posture, it probably happens to me as well. Like, yeah, with the next con, maybe your posture is going to get worse because every, like the things are small on the screen. So you're, you're going in, go- what's, what's that say? So I sp- I don't know. Yeah. Is, is there any? I, yeah, I, I just have terrible posture. I mean, I, I do too, to be honest. I'm constantly trying to like push, push my shoulders back. Uh, the other question. Uh, yeah, more blowback, Matthew, for a game that most critics fans disliked and you liked, or blowback for uh, when critics and fans like it and you don't uh, like it. I actually, uh, do, on the whole, have done okay with like avoiding blowback, um, not just by sitting on the fence, ha, 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 which some people may say, um, but uh, no, like I'm confident in all the reviews I've given. I make my case. Um, ah, but conf- confidence doesn't but like. Uh, no, and the I reason I say I that is because, like, like, like it, so I, I, I did get blowback. Admittedly, like you know, not on an astronomical scale, but for a few months later, <laughs> a few months after. Uh, so um, that's why I would say the blowback comes more often when you don't like a game that fans like or uh, other critics do, and especially exclusives. Big time because I mm. gave Detroit become hu- um yeah that's what it, that's what it's called Detroit become human one of its lower scores and yeah people got very cross <laughs> you don't yeah. get it what's going on? it's like no no I do get it don't worry I yeah, do I, get I, it yeah uh, I guess that now you say it like the idea that yeah I mean if you're a high scorer and you're just sort of an enthusiastic dope, then that's fine. <laughs> you know, all you're seen is the enthusiastic dope outlier. Uh, I've got plenty of games where I, I am very, you know, I, I sit at the higher end uh, on that. Uh, yeah, I guess the underscoring, because people feel like, I don't know, you're criticising something they've got as a cornerstone of their personality. More exactly, because b- people, so, people um, will, yeah, they make the games they like their yeah. personality, which is like, I, yeah, I, I don't would say do that. that. On the whole, I, I genuinely feel very lucky in that, A, working on magazines, you, you're that far removed from the audience, and people who spend money on mags are, you know, they, the regular readers, whatever, they're kind of invested, they kind of know you as critics, they, you know, they've bought into, like, the specific thing you're doing, so you're less likely to have that kind of, like, real kind of combative stuff. Um, and online, like... You know, the only site I've worked for is RPS, which, not to be too brown nosing to RPS, is on the whole like a pretty thoughtful site with, you know, I'd say smarter readers of games criticism. So we don't kind of get as much blowback on stuff, I'd say. You know, people are open to it. They're open to say, like, I disagree with this, but they respect the points made. Um, You know. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that sex just tooth. Lucky, I'm just lucky, I guess. Uh, let's do just a couple more. Also Simon. on YouTube, I just put anyone in limbo who disagrees with me, so I never have to see their opinions ever again. It's fantastic, <laughs> absolutely amazing. <laughs> Simon asked, "What's your most played game on Steam?" Oh. No, do you know off the top of your head? Because if you don't, I can say mine because I did look it up beforehand. Yeah, you can tell me yours. Uh, yeah, mine is 85 hours Yakuza Like a Dragon. And I feel like this has been said numerous times, but, you know, again, I think a lot of that is down to the fact that predominantly throughout my life, I played games on consoles. So my most played games on Steam are actually more recent games, I suppose. 
because I didn't have a gaming PC until, I don't know, six, seven years ago, maybe, was my first gaming PC. Whereas, like, yeah, before that, it was PlayStations and Xboxes and whatever yeah, else. I. I've I've never gone like full into like any game in a big way. My my highest one is Divinity Original Sin two with three hundred and twenty four hours. Right. Yeah. But then it's a big drop to one hundred and forty six for uh, The Witcher three. So. Um. So yeah, I like that, Simon. A very factual question that we were able to give you a factual yeah, answer. Yeah, I feel on. like I feel like you know we often get reviews on here where people have played for like a thousand hours and it just yeah. feels like oh wow they're so hardcore and you know sort of total amateur hour. But you know, ah, but come on, like I don't think I don't know. It's not the time played; it's what you do with those minutes. Indeed, indeed. And uh, where is it? There was one question I did want to get to. Yeah, let's finish with Rogue with Whimsy, who asked, uh, Hi, Colin and Matthew. Have you ever been invited to a wild, brackets, or at least awkward publicity stunt or stunt for a video game? Thanks for considering the question. All the best, Rogue with Whimsy. Thank you very much, Rogue with Whimsy. So, I wanted to ask this question because my answer is no. (laughs) I right. feel you're, I you're feel gambling big on me having a good I'm gambling to this. big time, big time because I feel you, like when I came into this game professionally, I let they stopped doing all of the, the killing the goats and all those nasty things that they did. <laughs> um, so like I I don't really have yeah anything I went to was quite like you know there was there were <laughs> nice context, canopies the goat killing. That they did have okay, yeah. For the God of War, go look it up, Google it. Um, but yeah, Matthew, it wasn't like they hit a goat in the head with a sledgehammer to celebrate Super Mario Galaxy. <laughs> Matthew, you're the the most salacious, uh, spicy, exciting. I mean, games the the event. the. the, the <clears throat> again, like even I was a little too late for anything really wild. I mean, one thing that used to happen a lot was. Um, people turning up at the office with like models who were there to like take pictures with teams and uh you know give you copies of the game or whatever but nice. like sort of slightly kind of um sort of more like your kind of um what's the best way of kind of kind of like your sort of sort of nuts or zoo kind of models sort of yeah. quite sort of bust, busty women you might expect it like i tell you what classic like old school e3 booth babe kind of stuff and it was always super awkward because we're just a bunch of like quite you know socially awkward nerds and then all of a sudden there's like a dude saying have a picture with these two models or like play a game with these two models sit and you're a little bit like uh like, i'm just gonna look really awkward and bad in this picture like this is not a this doesn't. This just doesn't end well. This isn't like what the identity of our mag is. I mean, we avoided most of that by being on Nintendo mags. Um, there, there was yeah, a Mario Nintendo, Kart. Nintendo, there Nintendo was Max. a Mario Kart time trial challenge, but they sent around, um, yeah, sort of w- women sort of stand by you with cups and stuff while you played things, and it was a little bit like, you know, what like just imagine that, me as I am now, looking a bit sheepish. Um, yeah. Uh, in terms of like like crazy stunts and stuff, nothing too, too exciting. I went to a really weird uh, thing for Mario and Sonic at the London Olympic Games where they had it in the Tower of London and it was hosted by Jonathan Edwards, the triple jumper um, and ex-Olympian um, or Olympian. Are you always an Olympian? Is it like a president? Are you just uh, Olympian ooh, when you're doing the Olympics? Great question. Great question. <laughs> I don't know, but like if... If there are I, any I, Olympians or ex-Olympians <laughs> watching, please let us know. That's are you an question. Olympian for life? I imagine you are. But anyway, uh, they had him. And at one point, it, we were in the Tower of London. Obviously, the Queen doesn't live in the Tower of London. Um, but they Spoiler. were like, they were like, the Queen's here. <laughs> and they had a kind of a, an official Queen lookalike, who I'd say looked like like 80% like the Queen. Like, it was a reasonable lookalike. I could understand how she could charge people to pay her to come and pretend to be a Queen. Mm-hmm. You know, she looked more like the Queen than I do, say. Uh, but they, everyone had to, like, act like it was the Queen. 
and then she like we all had to be like oh you know or whatever and then uh then she played jonathan edwards at like mario and sonic at the london olympic games which is obviously a lot of doing this yeah. with remotes so it was like the queen like thrashing away so that uh, big the cat could jump over some hurdles <laughs> um like it's 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 not amazingly salacious, but... I'll it, take it. It's good enough. It's good enough for me. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for that story, Matthew. Enjoyed it. Uh, and thank you very much, all of you, for your burning questions. If you want to guess your burning questions into it, please do email us, weekspot at rockpapershotgun.com. So... That just about does it for this edition of the PC Gaming Week Spot. Thank you very much, dear viewer, dear listener, for listening, for viewing. Of course, if you want more of us, there are ways to get more, I guess. Uh, you can follow us on social media. I am at column underscore earn. Matthew is at Mr. Basil underscore pesto. If you want to talk to some like-minded people, head over to Discord. Discord.gg forward slash rock, paper, shotgun. Also, if you want to watch the PC Gaming Week Spot, go to youtube.com forward slash rock, paper, shot, where you can like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff. Or if you prefer the audio version, subscribe to the PC Gaming Week Spot podcast via all your podcatching apps, including but not limited to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Pocket Casts, and so on. But for all of your PC gaming needs, head to rockpapershotgun.com. I know the PC Gaming Week Spot in the bag, Matthew, and maybe we'll, I don't know, maybe we'll chat about mercenaries next week. Maybe, you know, after a jam-packed week of things, maybe Mass nothing effect. will happen in the next seven days. Mass Effect is out Friday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Talk right. Mass Effect. I could show you my Shepherd. I'll show you my Shepherd if you show me yours. Oh, now we're getting salacious. Um, <laughs> but now it is time for my least favorite part of the show. This is the Parish Shormers bid the listener, the viewer. At you. So say goodbye, Matthew Castle. Goodbye. And say goodbye, Colin Mahern, Sloan Guffold.